All right, next up, next up, we've got an incredible artist, leader in the space, needs no introduction, honestly. Let's have a great, I'm really excited for this one. Excited to chat. We've got Grant Yoon, bring it on up here. Give it up for Grant. All right, all right. Grant, how you doing, man? I'm Welcome good. to Lisbon. I'm good. It's my first time here. Uh, I flew in yesterday at around 6 a.m. And so I've really just been exploring the city. That's awesome, man. Well, we got a lot of a lot of good recommendations. Obviously, a lot of good people uh, here to, to 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 learn more and hear more about about you and your art. And uh, we've got wow, look at this. You know, Greta Greta's always killing it, killing it with the visuals out here. Um, but it, it's it's looking great. It's looking great. Um, why don't we take it from the top? Uh, for those for those who maybe aren't super familiar with your artistic journey, just give us a little bit of like an overview of, of uh, your journey to, to digital art and then into Web3. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, kind of a long journey, but uh, <laughs> maybe like a 10 second overview. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've always been an artist. Um, my mom and my aunt who helped raise me, uh, they both have their masters in fine art. And so actually art was very kind of important in my life early on. And then when I moved uh, over to university or college uh, at the University of Wisconsin, that's really when I began doing digital art. Uh, you know, funny enough, I started digital art on Microsoft PowerPoint because I didn't know of any other like kind of dedicated illustrating software. Eventually, I moved over to Adobe Illustrator, which is what I use today. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and then how I got into NFT was really, I, I think I saw a video of someone talking about how they were flipping Decentraland. And I also saw a little bit about people. And so like I applied to Super Rare, uh, which is this one of one platform that, you know, at the time I wasn't even sure what it was, right? And uh, three months later, I completely forgot about it. Three months later, I got accepted to the platform. And that day I learned like what MetaMask was, like how to transfer Ethereum. Um, and really it's just been an uphill grind since then. I love that, I love that. I remember really well like, um you know some of your some of your first big sales on Super Rare, and I remember like kind of put put it on the radar. Um, but let's let's before we get there, like let's talk a little about your style, like the evolution of the style. You know, I, I know that it's it's been described as neo precisionist. You know, there's a few different kind of like elements there. Um, how did you kind of come across like your signature styles? I know you played around with some different things before you kind of like really found your found your voice or, or artistically. Um, just take us through that process. Yeah, I mean, I think the process, uh, it's kind of hard to articulate into words, you know. But I will say, you know, I do coin this term that I use for my style as neo-precisionism. Uh, it's almost a way to ground myself in how I think about my process and my practice as an artist. So precisionism, for people who don't know, was a style uh, from the early 1900s. And really, I kind of draw similar inspirations, both in themes, uh, both thematically, but also in the ways I approach the actual art itself. Um, you know, as in a kind of a dedicated, uh, as a native digital illustrator, you know, I have tools that are basically infinitely, uh, you know, precise because it's all math. And so, you know, it's the style that uh, I call neo precisionism. But within that style, I'm really exploring the everyday. Um, I'm sure a lot of people here, when they look around, they can appreciate that there's lots of landscapes, lots of interiors, and lots of kind of still life uh, configuration that kind of is reminiscent of. Uh, anyone's life really it's fairly ambiguous and this is kind of the themes and the themes that I want to portray through my art. I love it. It definitely comes through. So let's talk about the trajectory of your of your journey to Web3. Uh, obviously like it feels like you know there was a you know you started doing the early works on Super Air, all that. And it feels like there was kind of like this real like turning point, almost like a catalyst, like a breakthrough moment. Take us through that and um, and what that felt like and what were some of the factors at play. Yeah, so the biggest factor so I got into Super Rare, I think like February 6th or so of 2021. Uh, you know, sales were somewhat slow. I mean, I was very thankful I still had sales at the time. Um, but then one day I woke up and everyone, sorry, all my works were just sold, like the ones that were unsold. And a couple of collectors had come in and they kind of made a commitment to purchasing my art. And ever since then, I realized that the, there's like a huge amount of importance and weight placed on Twitter, actually. Uh, prior to that, I had like no involvement on Twitter. You know, before NFTs, I had zero Twitter followers. I don't even think I had a Twitter. Um, and then after that moment, I realized that the network effect of Web3 is so important, uh, especially when it comes to artists and collectors and trying to push 
uh, a narrative of you know, digital art importance overall. And so ever since then, I think, um, through the connections I've made online, uh, I've been able to kind of immerse myself in the space, but also kind of, uh, you know, kind of climb my way up the ladder, so to speak. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, one, one of the things that I, I think, one of the things I think you've, you've done really well is you've built a very, like, diverse, eclectic, and really strong collector base, right? Um, and it's something that I think, I, like, artists ask me all the time. It's like, how do you build a collector base in Web3? So, like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, like, how, like, what, what were some of the, like, what were some of the, and not even strategies, but just, like, some of the lessons that, that you kind of learned along the way towards building that, and any sort of tips or advice you would give to, like, an artist that's entering Web3 in terms of being able to reach these collectors and, and really resonate and build these relationships? Yeah, I think one thing is reaching out. I think a lot of people expect um, sales to happen. A lot of people expect opportunities to come their way. Um, but I do seriously believe that it's up to you as the artist or as the content creator um, or as the builder to go out and push yourself as much as possible. And so, you know, I think that goes back to what I was talking about. Networking, I think, is extremely important. And honestly, a lot of the times, the space is really lighthearted. People make a lot of jokes, and oftentimes those jokes are kind of what get you your foot in the door. And a lot of the times, it's kind of the memes that are shared. I mean, uh, you know, people I think are aware that I have a fairly good relationship with Vincent Van Gogh, the collector. And the first interaction I ever had with him is I made a random Pepe-related artwork, and that was honestly the very beginning of our relationship. And so I think like small interactions go a long way, especially in the space, um, and especially on Twitter because things are, you know, even if you can lead a post, you know, those interactions still exist. So, you know, for better or for the worse, uh, you know, those interactions uh, will be documented, you know, now and forever. I think that's really smart too. Like, the, you've seen a lot of artists kind of like, you know, by, by, jump, by, by, by kind of participating in the meme or, the, or, the, or whatever kind of like the narrative of is, it's a way to also kind of attract attention to your work. Um, that, that, you know, you may not necessarily, you know, might not break through the noise otherwise or through the algorithm or, or the like. And so I think that that's really smart. Um, I feel like there's, there's so much to talk about. Obviously, you've been doing so much recently, but I know you recently just had uh, a big, a big uh, show in Korea. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, the exhibition and, um, and, and the significance there. Yeah, so for people who don't know, I just had a solo show uh, out in a gallery called Soft Corner in Seoul. This was uh, at the last week of March. And this was in collaboration with Avon Art, uh, who helped me do all the physical uh, re reproductions of my digital works. And so um, it was one of my first solo shows. And, you know, it was one of those shows where, you know, it was in a different country. And I am Korean, Thai native, uh, but my Korean isn't as good. And so it was really interesting uh, experience trying to connect with a collector base and an artist base. Uh, and an art base that uh, is Korean, uh, but you know, for me, like it was just there was a language barrier, and so it was a huge learning curve, honestly. But at the same time, uh, it was just wonderful being able to you know share my vision and share my art with a community uh, that uh, you know I was somewhat unfamiliar with. Absolutely, it was it was really special uh, showcasing your art at the Gateway Korea, which we did in uh, at during Free Soul Free Block in September of last year. Yeah, no, thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, I, honestly, like I think opportunities like that and opportunities like this, where I'm able to show my art in such, you know, grand and large scale, uh, you know, kind of amazes myself too. I mean, I've never seen my art like as large as it is here, and uh, I think uh, a lot of the art that I have, uh, I always like to have it shown physically, and, and especially in large scale, because I think it gives you kind of a la layer of depth that you might not get otherwise. Completely agree. Completely agree. Well, I know you're 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 a prolific individual. You're always working on things. Like, what 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 what's next for Grant Yoon? And like, what are what are you working on? What do you have in the works? What can you speak to? You know, or that that we should keep an eye out for. Yeah. So I have. It's hard for me to talk about exactly, you know, in detail. But I do have a drop coming up within, I'd say, the next month or two, uh, and there will be a print that's involved as well. And so I think it's a really um, exciting opportunity uh, for myself and also an opportunity for people who don't have a physical print to be received as well. Amazing, amazing. And, um, you know, I'd also just love to get your perspective as well. Like, you know, obviously it's been like a funny cycle so far, you know, 
Um, you know, I'm curious, just like, how are you seeing things shake out? How are you feeling, you know, kind of going through it, staying grounded, all that? And, and where, where do you feel like, uh, like digital art is going? Yeah, so I think over the years, um, it's definitely been clear that there, you know, has been a manic phase and now we're kind of on a slower downturn. Uh, but what I've noticed is that the people still here, you know, both online and physically here today, you know, I, I feel as though the community is becoming more and more tightly knit. And I think that's, you know, honestly the most important thing. People who are here to champion the movement and champion the art uh, and back it not only with their pockets, but also just back it with uh, their commitment in time and, and their commitment, um, you know, as digital creators or as collectors or as builders. And so, honestly, you know, despite the fact that I'm sure a lot of people are aware that, you know, sales uh, for all creators uh, overall are, are slower than they were in the past, um, I'm very hopeful and, and also very happy to be here and, and be, to be a contributor in this space. Absolutely. Well, we could, we could easily go a lot longer, but we are currently out of time for this one. So everyone, please give it up for Grant Yoon. Yeah.